Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to talk about uh, some interesting short sto- uh, an interesting short story uh, that I have found, one that is about a murder investigation uh, and dead birds or just one dead bird, I am referring to A Jury of Her Peers by Susan Glaspell. For those that don't know, Susan Glaspell uh, is, um, or was, a a writer um, uh, who did most of her work in the early 1900s. She was known mostly as a playwright, but she also wrote short stories and uh, books. Um, I I believe uh, what I read is she is credited with discovering Eugene O'Neill, which is pretty, pretty groovy. Um, And she, uh, she founded a playwright group. So she did a lot of, um, uh, a lot of work, uh, uh, which is, which is interesting because she, you know, she was a a woman in the early 1900s. So that couldn't, um, that couldn't have been easy for her uh, to, you know, become so prolific. Um, in, a, in a time when, you know, women, you know, still had to deal with uh, being seen as less than men. Another interesting thing about her is she's from da- Davenport, Iowa, uh, which is not too far away from where I grew up in Iowa. Um, and she also wrote for a, a Des Moines newspaper, uh, which is how she, um, you know, got the inspiration for the story, uh, um, which, uh, which, which I, I think is pretty cool, you know, like a, uh, a short story inspired by uh, real life events. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's talk about um, the short story. Uh, I'll do a little summary, a little analysis, and we'll move on from there. A jury of her peers begins with the character of Martha Hale uh, being called to the Wright farm. Um, she is she's being called by the sheriff, um, and I also I guess also her husband. Um, they uh, they need help in investigating a murder, um, and um, the the murder suspect is Minnie Foster, um, a woman that Martha Hale has known, uh, but has not really kept in contact with um, for a number of years. Uh, the, when she gets to the house, uh, Martha's husband uh, talks about uh, discovering Mr. Wright's body. He, he was the, uh, the owner of the farm. Um, he, uh, when he got to the house, uh, Minnie was a little distraught, and she said that someone had come and uh, strangled um, Mr. Wright to death. Uh, but um, there, there was no sign of a break-in or anything like that. Uh, and so a lot of, a lot of the evidence is pointing to, or the evidence, you know, is pointing to, um, Minnie Foster. Uh, however, the, the men, um, at at the house, especially the sheriff, can't seem to find any clues suggesting that Minnie Foster may have done it. And so that's why they've called, uh, Martha, um, as well as, uh, Mrs. Peters, the sheriff's wife, to, uh, to, you know, search the house and see if, uh, if they can find anything as well, uh, since they're and you know they they might have a different perspective on the matter. Mrs. Peters and Martha both uh, work with their way through the house, and they do discover a number of things that it, that suggest that, or I mean, just flat out say that um, uh, Minnie killed her husband. They discover a knotted quilt um, that uh, that to the outside observer just looks like a quilt, but to um, to the women point out that she's been you know she's capable of making knots that allow for strangula- strangulation to to happen. Um, they also discover a dead bird, which they believe um, was the only company that Minnie had uh, these past 20 years as she was isolated on the farm. Uh, so the, uh, they, they believe that, uh, that Wright, the, the, her husband killed the, uh, the bird and, uh, uh, because it was her only company, she lashed out in anger and ended up strangling, um, her husband as a result. Um, uh, they, they, uh, the, the ladies do not tell the sheriff about this, um, and, uh, which is interesting because, uh, the, uh, one of the men notes that, uh, that, um, Mrs. Peters is married to the law, and so she would, she would, um, you know, follow the law if necessary, uh, and turn someone in. 
And so they they don't tell the sheriff, and they, they in fact go out of their way to seem, seemingly cover up uh, the evidence that they found. Uh, and the story kind of ends with the with the sheriff again clueless, not really sure um, if uh, if there's any evidence suggesting that Minnie Foster may have done it. And the uh, the two women uh, trying to figure out if they should uh, re- uh, come forward with this evidence or or hide it, as they they um, they are beginning to understand Minnie's Minnie's plight in the matter. And that's that's where it's end. And in terms of analysis, there's a lot to talk about here it's a it's a it's a very deep and complex story uh the first thing that comes to mind when i read this is the title um a jury of her peers what does that refer to in the story uh the first thing that that um i think about when thinking of this is is the people going through uh minnie's belongings um as she um as she's currently sitting in a jail cell um uh the the people who are who are looking for evidence are the jury of her peers again this take place this story takes place in the early 19th hundreds um in a small town uh there probably wouldn't have been a, a very large jury pool to to go by so the, the sheriff is trying to avoid having to seek out a jury um in favor of just finding evidence so that uh, many would confess and uh they 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 go about their their business of, of of sentencing her to whatever you know whatever crime uh they 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 choose to sentence her for so the the uh jury of her peers in this story well first and foremost is her is the townsfolk um and the the sheriff doesn't seem to be you know on her side he's already uh come out and said you know i believe she's she's guilty so not a fair trial um if i say so and then uh related to that is um you know the uh, the women in the story these women are a jury of Minnie's peers they understand her plight they understand where she's coming from they're considering the evidence and they're de- deciding if they should come forward with the evidence um they they can sense that you know Minnie was a um an isolated individual uh who um only had like one thing in the world to keep her grounded a, a bird and she lost that bird which caused her to fly to a rage and and kill someone so um they're 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 considering all of this and deciding whether or not to come forward with the evidence and i like how the 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 title um refers um at a, in a larger sense to everybody and but more specifically to the to the women who could only hope to understand her um because the men are are, are largely misogynistic in this story and I, I i do like also how um um uh susan points out this misogyny in a, in a very subtle way uh through the men's dialogue another big big theme of this story is guilt um uh the biggest factor of guilt in this story is obviously Minnie's own guilt for having murdered somebody but um uh, the the other characters in the story do feel guilt as well Martha Hale feels uh guilt because you know she uh she used to be friends with Minnie Foster and uh she lost touch with her over time which which happens especially in the 1900s when you didn't have um many accessible ways to keep in contact with someone Although interestingly, um Martha's husband was going to the right farmstead to um uh get him to buy a phone which would have enabled contact between the two much easier um but uh Martha feels very guilty um that um that she hasn't been in contact and she she uh, once she learns this evidence and sees this isolation she begins to suspect that um if uh if she had been in contact more with with many maybe this might not have happened and there's a good quote that I would like to read to you but I tell you what I do miss Mrs. Peters I wish I had come over sometimes when she was here I wish I had but of course you will you were awful busy Mrs. Hale your house and your children I could have come retorted Mrs. Hale shortly I stayed away because it weren't cheerful and that's why I ought to have come I she looked around I never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's lonesome place and always was. I wish I had so- come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. She did not put it into words. And so what you give with that quote is that um that passage is that um Martha feels a lot of guilt. Um that if she had just come over maybe once or twice, maybe Minnie wouldn't have felt so isolated and she wouldn't have reacted the way she did when her husband killed her bird. Um at least that's what they suspect. Um uh and uh, like 
it's 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 easy in retrospect to be like oh i i i regret you know not coming by um uh, but there she tries to provide a reason but she suspects that like that that reason isn't good enough like she she's unfortunately had a part to play in this um even if she didn't directly murder mr wright her actions by not visiting a friend might have played some role um, and she, so like, um, she, she feels a lot of guilt because of that. And Mrs. Peters also feels guilt, um, maybe, uh, for not, um, being around, uh, Minnie Foster so much, but also because of how she's, um, behaving in, in at this crime scene. Uh, at one point, uh, one of the, um, one of the characters says that Mrs. Peters is married to the law. And so that, um, she has an obligation to serve the law, uh, which means punishing, you know, people who do crime crimes. And so by hiding this evidence from her husband and not telling people that, you know, she, she was capable of making knots and capable of, or, uh, that, that her husband had killed the bird. And so that's motive. Like she's hiding that evidence and she's not being truthful with her husband and she's not upholding the law that she's supposed to her, uh, serve. So there's that inner conflict going on between her. Uh, that's not really, you know, that's, that's not really helping her at all. It's, it's making her feel, you know, incredibly guilty. Um, and, uh, she has to decide whether or not she's going to turn in Minnie Foster or if she's going to, um, uh, keep the evidence hidden. And that's, I feel like that's only going to increase the amount of guilt that she feels. Um, and e even after this story ends. And so I, I really like the, um, uh, how there's a person who's feeling, or a person who's obviously guilty, and people who are, are feeling guilt within the story. Another interesting aspect of the story is how the characters are avoiding confronting the tr the truth. Um, they they obviously don't want to think any deeper about uh, the 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 quilt at hand, um, knowing that. Uh, Minnie Foster was capable of knotting a quilt, um, suggests that she was capable of strangling her husband. And they, they quickly change topics so that they don't have to think about this, which is fair. Like, why would you want to, why would you want to, like, think about that? Uh, like, you could, uh, you could attribute it to anything else. And, you know, maybe that's just the style she was using at the time. Uh, but it becomes increasingly more ob obvious that you can't, you can't hide from the truth. They discover the bird, um, and uh, like uh, they they try to find other answers for the bird. Like, oh, you know, maybe it, maybe a cat got it, but there's no cat on this farmstead. Uh, um, they they try to come up with other answers, but it, it always comes back to the same thing. Either Minnie killed it, um, and she's capable of of, of killing in, uh, live things. Or her husband killed it, and because she was so lonesome and isolated, um, and this was her only company, she reacted in anger and killed her husband by strangling him. Um, especially because the bird itself seems to have been strangled, uh, sort of delivering a, a, a sense of revenge on her husband. Um, but they don't want to confront that, because if you confront that, that means you, you found the evidence, and that you have to turn in Minnie Foster. And you have to decide whether or not uh, you, you should uh, sentence someone uh, to whatever uh, Minnie Foster is going to be sentenced to, uh, a lot on their mind, and so they're do they're doing mental gymnastics to try to avoid confronting the truth, as I'm sure anybody would do. And it's only leading further to the to the guilt they're feeling, as they recall all the all the ways they could have helped Minnie in her life. Another interesting aspect of this story is the the compelling and very gloomy prose. Um, it's like uh, the characters are, you know, the, it's leading up to an execution, which is exactly what it's leading up to. Uh, the, the characters are deciding whether or not they should sentence um, Minnie Foster, probably to death, given the time period. Um, it's 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 very gloomy, and none of the characters want to confront uh, the the facts of of what's going on around them. Uh, this uh, I, I really like the prose. It, it weaves very beautifully throughout the story, uh, and you really get an insight into what the characters are feeling and the the emotions that they're that are going through them as they discover that someone they they know and is dear to them committed a murder. Uh, there's a really good quote that I would like to read to you from this. Somebody wrung its neck, she said, in a voice that was slow and deep. And then again, the eyes of the two women met. This time clung together in a look of dawning comprehension, of growing horror. Mrs. Peters looked from the dead bird to the broken door of the cage. Again their eyes met, and just then there was a sound at the outside door. 
So what what's what um what Susan Gospel is getting at there uh, is that the characters are are slowly realizing that uh, the dead bird is in some way related to Minnie Foster um, that um, uh, most likely her husband killed this bird and again which I've said before uh, but I really like the prose that she uses the the dawning horror the the sort of gloomy prose um, that that really makes this story uh, top notch I I would say it's very Steinbeckian in nature. Nature, um, and that it's, it's so it's compelling it really hooks you uh, it sinks your teeth into which um, which I think is very rare in a um, in, uh, in an author yeah, I really only encountered it from Steinbeck and maybe John Williams uh, so it, it's really good to find another author who um, who has that ability to to hook you in so those are my thoughts on a jury of her peers by Susan Glasswell a really wonderful um, uh, short story about uh, a murder investigation and the decision that two of the women characters have to make um, about one of their friends. Um, I, I definitely suggest that you go out and find it if you can. It's um, it's a very beautiful short story. Um, and if you if you read it before, you know, comment below and let me know what you think. Um, I would love to hear from you and um, we can have a discussion about this short story. I'm very interested in finding more of Susan Glasswell's work because this, this uh, short story was so good. Um, now I'll probably seek out one of her novels in the near future. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, so that we can get Susan Glasswell out to the masses and more people can find out about this really good short story. And in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck and your weird and unlawful travels. Farewell.